you'll just make it worse. Now, the magical tradition, which is another bequeathment of our ancient forefathers, because that's my, actually my main work. Those who've been part of my online mystery school or taken my classes know that. That my work is mainly with the divination arts, tarot, astrology, Kabbalah, numerology. Why? Well, it's just like I talked about yoga a few minutes ago. These are the ways that our forefathers already created for us. We don't need to create anything new. They already did it. They created us the tools, the plutonic tools for helping to clean our psyche. I've just created another uh, website. I'm so concerned, you see. <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I, I am very concerned about what's going to be happening in the next seven years. There, there's movements and actions happening, which is removing our power more and more every day. So we need to defend ourselves by bolstering our own defenses and empowering ourselves. The way to do that is through the magical arts. Now, if we do not autonomously clean our psyches and strive to live morally, and if we continue to violate the natural order because of our inner emotional state, we will allow the ego to manifest surrogate channels to exercise its repressions and other negative debris. In short, if we give up the right rulership of the self, we inevitably, inevitably breed Orwellian political and religious tyrants to take over the job and turn us into what George Simmel called the smiling depressives, or worse. All right? Or Carl Jung said it much more simply. When an inner situation is not made conscious, it appears outside of you as fate. When you are that toxic inside and you're not knowing how to deal with it, I mean, you clean everything, don't you? But if you don't clean our psyche, then we give rise to the worst kind of people, the worst kind of monstrosities that exist. In TV land, we marvel and even love these penitentiary psychodramas in which some quiescent bell, you know, falls in love with some incarcerated sex fiend. However, the main tragedy of womankind, of which this is but a paltry sideshow, goes unnoticed. As I say in my book, the women who once ruled the world are now content to serve, serve its destroyers. What has happened? As Voltaire said, the ancient Romans built their greatest masterpieces of architecture, yeah, for wild beasts to fight in. Now having projected his anger onto the world, says the Course in Miracles, man sees vengeance about to strike at him, his own attacks thus perceived as self-defense. Get it? When fear unites with knowledge, says the ancient Maya books, terrible things are done. Well, Vico knew about it, Plato knew about it, that what happens in the psyche is, you know, the cycles of the psyche manifest as the cycles of history. First you have chaos, then theocracy, then aristocracy, democracy, and then as the republics become imperial or tyrannous, they collapse and we're back to chaos again. But it's not historical cycles, it's articulated to our inner cycles. Now there's a time in which the simple shadow work, given that you're doing it, by the way, but there's even a time that even if you are doing the simple shadow work, that can sometimes prove not enough to help clean the psyche. When we are not integrated internally, and when our own masculine and feminine aspects are imbalanced, we invariably turn to external representatives to restore a semblance of stability. We turn to parents, heroes, politicians, evangelists, authority figures, you know, whoever. We even turn to ideals and causes for that structure. And all manner of horrors have arisen as a result of that. Now the approach of Pluto uh, arouses fear, paranoia, and the whole cocktail of the darker toxic emotions. Subsequently, the individuals feel deeply insecure, and as a result, tend to cleave even more to these familiar Saturnian archetypes. The one that I'm mostly thinking of is Big Daddy, the male archetype, this preposterous archetype that habitually down through the centuries we have to deal with. And that's where these, the cult of the, of the politician is so important. We have one right now. Let's note, ladies and gentlemen, the language. We're told there's a war on terror. Well, maybe it's the English in me, but the word terrorist and the word terrorism are very different than the word terror. There is a war on terror, all right, but it's of a psychological nature rather than a political one. So when you find yourself in a climate of atrocity and terror, find out what's happening inside your own self that's causing that into existence. And we know, as we've been looking at it, that this archetype of the father figure is nothing more than a rescripting of the old God lie from Jehovah. The concept is that you do not find vultures and carrion crows sitting in a Japanese tea garden. Right? Well, that's what these creatures are. 
So therefore, don't you see what they're doing? How wonderful to create an ambiance in the world full of mayhem, toxicity, cruelty, yeah? injustice, because that's what they are inside. And you like your outward, you feel comfortable, don't you? In the ambiance that suits you. So a world of foment and all of us strangling and murdering each other. That's the world that they want to create for themselves. And America is very good at it. The normal round of warfare after World War II is a startling catalog of atrocities. And archaeology supports the view that warfare is a development of only the past 10,000 years. The combined military expenditures of all the world's governments in 1987 were so large that all of the social programs of the United Nations could be financed for 300 years. And you're wondering why people are starving and we can't fix poverty. The ambiance must be full of paranoia and fear. That helps. So as Edward Griffin, one of the great American scholars into this subject says, you deliberately create the problems and then offer only those solutions which result in the expansion of government. You create conditions so frightful at home and abroad that the abandonment of personal liberties and national sovereignty will appear as a reasonable price to pay in return for domestic tranquility and world peace. So we don't have the order within, and we're looking to Big Daddy to bring it in. And Big Daddy's only too happy to do it, to create false nemesis and false heroes and create a, you know, a whole culture of fear and paranoia this way to the paranoid society. Because they will bring you, as the imagery shows you, they will bring you an order. They will bring you the new world order. But it will be a certain kind of order. It will be the draconian or Orwellian order. As Orwell describes it, it's the boot stamping in the face of humanity forever. That'll be your order. The order of stand where you want, where you're told. Vaccinations, injections, and mind control. Is that the kind of order we want because we're not psychically in tune inside? That we're hypnotized by these individuals who use these talismanic words and terms? Security, strength, a stronger America. Enemies, safety. It's like some crazy movie where they're promising us safety and then saying, yeah, we'll give you safety, we'll give you security, but we'll do it through war. We have to have a war. The war is the expatiation, the processing of all that toxicity. And we feel good about it. Bush's uh, rating soared after the war was you know, initiated. Even though people said many hundreds of thousands of people might want, have to die. They said, that's all right. His rating soared. We have more to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, but we have to pause now. So in doing that, let me just thank you again for being here, for lending your time and your energy to our cause. Thank you very much.